Well, first of all, congratulations on your season two renewal. Thank you. That is, so if you guys don't know, um, these guys found out in the middle of a panel at the Television Critics Association back in January in Pasadena. They were having a panel about the show and I guess one of the executives announced during the panel, and this has never happened in the history of the Television Critics Association, that they were renewed. So these guys found out in front of a room full of journalists. Mm -hmm. How was that? Did you guys have like at least an inkling? No idea. Uh, I don't think we, it was, it was, I mean, to be able to be surrounded by everyone and in the more of our cast that to be able to hear the good news with everyone else though, I mean, that was so cool. Let alone that we had an audience. I think we all forgot in that moment, just sort of <laughs> jump for joy and our hearts were skipping a beat, well, but it was very exciting. If you look, there's a photo online, yeah. I think, and it's, it's people jumping for joy and then I'm there kind of like <laughs> that. <laughs> Because I realize oh, that no, I'm, I I'm already it. one script behind. <laughs> You're like, oh, but, I should be yeah. writing right now. Yeah, I know. I should. I got to go grab my laptop. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Adam, when you started putting this show together, um, and we just did a Facebook Live, so you guys are going to hear some of those questions again. But um, when you started putting this show together, what was your concept? What was the idea? And where did it kind of come from? Oh, I, um, a weird place. Um, <laughs> It, uh, I mean, it started with um, just a story about growing up and a story about um, a family come, you know, coming to terms with something tragic that happened. Um, and you know, those two ideas dovetailed into, you know, well, what if there was a kid who fell into a coma? Um, and during those 12 years, the family went in wildly different directions um, and they had to you know, adjust when, when their son suddenly awoke and then you know, the sci-fi gear kind of kicked in and was like, oh, well, what if he went to a fantastical other world and uh, <laughs> woke up with powers and, you uh -huh. know, that helped. And the way the show was like kind of a slow burn into where this family has gone, because when it first, the first couple of episodes, it was that they were all kind of awkward and they didn't know what to do with this kid now. And, but then we found out that while he was gone, while he was having his own adventures, this family really was also. Yeah. Um, what did you think when they told you, because you guys, this is, I think one of the first times a show has only been, uh, has been available on a weekly basis, online, all at once, on an app, and on demand. What did you think when you were finishing this, this first season and they were like, oh, we're going to put it all out? Um, I, I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we... You know, when, when writing the episodes, you always try to end on a cliffhanger because you think you have, you know, six days that you have to, you know, people are out doing, living their lives as they should. <laughs> and, and not sitting it, for you, 10 you, hours straight. Yeah, exactly. And you, have, and you have to draw them back. So, you know, we, we always ended each episode on a cliffhanger. Um, but just the ability to, you know, knowing that people have the ability to not have to wait that, that extra week was just... Um, you know, it was it was exciting um, because I mean I've you know I like to binge watch shows, so it was it was nice to get but people the, the choice. But in the actually in the writing of it or in in the reading of it after every episode, we would definitely as as just reading it would be like, well, what happens next? So if you could actually for season two just have all ten, have it all us, ready and then present it to you guys, so you could binge read it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, and how are you guys? Are you guys watching it on a weekly basis, or did you guys, when it's when it became available, did you just watch it all? I binged it. I binged it. I think I. I, I mean, I, I binged it too. I was just too excited. Yeah. I, I wanted to know what was happening in the first four episodes too. <laughs> yeah. really I'm badly. old, so I want them to come over to the house and act it out. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> We perform each episode for You're like Romy still setting the VCR for it. Yeah. But, but we don't have the money to you know, put that up on screen, so we do it, we do it like a puppet show. <laughs> yeah. and we all have, it's just sock puppets. That would be so cool. <laughs> that would be the coolest. You now go that. on the DVD extras. Um, so since we have 90% of the Matthews family here, how did you come about, how did this family come together as a casting? Oh. Um, it... Uh, uh, over the course of a couple mm. months, I think. Wow. You know, it's, it's... How good were we? Yes. Um, <laughs> Who's your favorite child? Yeah. I, th I think we really... Um, y you know, you, ha you have to look at... In, in casting a family, um, y you can either find people that uh, look like one another, or you can, you know, find um, fantastic actors. Uh, and these were, you know, everyone who we, we cast... <laughs> 
<laughs> which, which one are we? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's an excellent question. Is that a, yeah. <laughs> Only I know the answer to that. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, these were, everyone came in and just knocked it out of the park and, you know, just, there's, you know, um, they, they, they were, in, you know, who I envisioned in my mind, mm -hmm. so it was, it was easy, actually, and for me. For you guys, Berkeley, Berkeley and John mostly, when you guys were cast as brothers, what was the process for you guys of, like, bonding as brothers? Or did you, was it better for you guys to, like, really not know each other since you were in a coma for 12 years? I, I mean, there, there, there are elements of that, but I, I think one of the fun, uh, I mean, parts of the show, too, is, is just sorting having that sort of innate brotherly bond that... Um, Luke and Holden both are attached to. Um, I, I think it's grounded in the fact that I think me and John, even just right on the get-go, got along so well, and I think we're just really good pals, and buddies that you know we you know confide in each other. We hang out. We just sort of you know see each other when we can. So I think it was an easy way to. Yeah, sort it, of was, it was just nice to like. I don't know. He was he lives so close to me. We're in the same city. It was just easy to get together, and it wasn't yeah, it wasn't very hard. It was like day one. Foundation. I was like, I know I'm going to be spending a lot of time with you. Yeah, <laughs> and I love that Luke, early on, was kind of he was the big brother. Yeah, yeah like he yeah, had to totally. be the big brother, and then we found out later on that he was not exactly the up and up big brother that we would want. Um, oh, but so and has 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 Romy become kind of like a mom figure to you guys? Oh, 100%. Have you have you taken like taken an eye, kept an eye on them? But she she like made us brownies and stuff like that. On oh, I did. Set. I did. Such a, such and regular brownies she's too, by the way. Amazing baker. <laughs> what are they? I want to yeah, say that right bites, now. Seriously. They're just they're regular right. brownies. Because they film in Canada, where that has right. to be announced. <laughs> I just want to I just want to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> they're delicious. Though. Though. Tiny bites they're are out of the tiny, tiny bites are amazing. So I um, I had a little bit of extra time on my hands. We're going to try to rectify that on season two. Mm -hmm. No. Um, and, and so I, I love to bake, so I would bake for them. But really, actually, even in the pilot, we made an effort, and it wasn't a difficult one, to really get to know each other. So the dinner scenes seem like we do that all the time, or mother-son conversations seem like we do that all the time, because I, um, I am a firm believer, and as a as a TV watcher and a film lover, if you see that the cast is connected or having fun, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to believe it more. And it, it goes just beyond, I mean, I think that we do have chemistry, but I really do think it's because we all care about each other a lot, as dorky as that sounds. <laughs> but, and now, yeah. Eden, you joined five episodes in or four episodes in. How was that coming in with, you know, this group that is has bonded? I was just like, I'm not supposed to be here. Everyone's like, so loves each other so much. And I don't know anyone. But then I got into the table read. And, and uh, lucky for us, a lot of these actors are Canadian and very, very nice. Yeah, a lot very of us. Nice yeah, I know, people. right? A lot of us. Um, they are. But wait, now I want to go back because I need to know is what just... is a hair test and what do they do? No, I, I was Everyone just on... has a hair and makeup test, yeah. and especially at the beginning of a season because they're testing out the, the camera they're using and how much right. makeup they have to use. I mean, on this, they got to use a lot. I mean, it's like spackle and paste. I'm just saying, I'm 172 years old. Um, <laughs> So they do that every season just to, they're also looking at wardrobe and, and looking at colors and what looks good because something might look good in the mirror and then you're like, oh my God, I didn't know that that would look right, like, like that right. on camera. Yeah, and is this also when they tell you like, okay, no more haircuts for you? Oh, like, yeah, they, 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 they no get a look for you bites. and then maintain, yeah, no more tiny bites. And no more brown. Uh, and sort of a look for you to maintain and, and be <laughs> yeah. alongside other people and make sure the different people's looks can be paired up with other people and still look like. You it's know, really family. just, you know, nine months of free haircuts. Exactly. That's, I mean, I, just would, do that. I would get into Ride TV the wave. just for that. Yeah. yeah. So, Berkeley, you, have, you of the panel so far, I mean, Eden's done some, but you've, you've done the bulk of the special effects stuff. Mm. You and Dylan, who plays Willa, um, what is it like basically filming scenes where you're literally the only real thing in the room? It, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you, you get an environment where you, I will be on like a green floor and a green screen and they're like, that's sc something scary is coming this way and you run towards the, the nothing over there. But it's 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 a lot of fun, and it, it, I mean, in saying that, that is a that's actually what it says in the script. There's no, <laughs> yeah, it does, there's it's, no it's word. not it's not mountain. We don't it's even just know like it's something scary. Yeah, something's coming Holden at you. runs from something way. scary. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in as much as we joke too, it is a it's a very collaborative process of the directors, the writers, the visual teams. They'll give like sketches of what they have, the ideas of where things of like sort of what I'm reacting to. And it's, it's kind of fun. It's the sort of the purest sort of imaginative state of being able to act to 
what you can imagine is there. And so I am sort of fabricating whatever I'm being told to fabricate in my mind. And then it's kind of, it's fun. It's, it's an interesting part of the job to be able to, to be able to do. Is that what you do when you're acting with me? I just imagine you as, 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 I don't. Uh, <laughs> so are, let's go back to the episode you guys just watched. Um, so, but you also work with practical effects. Um, and I just want to know, was the TV wired to blow up during their cabin scene? Everything was wired. Everything was wired. Everything was wired. It was, Every, everything it was, was a, like. So, I mean, I don't actually have telekinetic powers. I'm well, sorry no, to no, break no, it I just, to you. Was it added in like, because if that's what happened, then you, yeah. yeah. Wait, this isn't a reality show? <laughs> What's going on? I am out of here. Um, was, it, was it something that had to be done in post, or did you have to blow up a TV every time these two got into bed? <laughs> wait, wait. There was no other way to say that. <laughs> no, yeah. I think I mean, we were was, under the covers when it was all happening, kind of like hiding out under the covers while everything was blowing yeah, up. Yeah, we didn't see it. So we didn't really we see didn't, anything. We, that was we didn't really up. see it because we were... Under, okay. it was, we had no, there was no, there's no visual cues. You couldn't see the room. Right, right. They were working. We were yeah. working. There was one, it was, one thing. It was working. dark. Right. Yeah. There was one thing in that scene where they, they, I don't remember if you see it or not, but uh, they had like a fire, fire extinguisher, extinguisher go off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I wow. can't quite even remember what was happening, but I think our feet were hanging out of the end of the like bed covers and. <laughs> And, and a happened, cold and blast of like, fire oh my God. You feel that. That is something that is like, oh, okay. And so that was, that's, that is, I remember, that's the thing is, I agree. It was all rigged. Though. The one thing yeah. that you remember. I hope no one told you that the fire extinguisher was going to go out. <laughs> right, so. yeah. They're just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's on fire, so. Okay, so I want to talk about Luke's trajectory now, because we talked about this at Facebook Live, and I'm deeply concerned about this character. <laughs> because <laughs> even though he is, he's, you know, he's a college student, and they get into, like, trouble, and, but there seems to be a level of recklessness in this kid that we didn't know, because when we see him in the family scenes, and when we see him with Holden, he's being very responsible, and he's being very considerate and caring, but then we see him at school and being very reckless. Yeah, no, I, um, it's definitely, like... You know, having you know Holden come out of the coma and him trying to kind of establish his own identity and you know seek some kind of normalcy in his life. It's definitely, you know, those events are the catalyst for him kind of you know going down this path. And it's just like it was interesting having the character of Riley be my girlfriend. You know, because she is like she's that kind of totem right. that would just you know send me off into the, these parties and, you know, want to get into this stuff. Oh, yeah, because it was it episode two where you take him to the party? And he's, like, yeah. the way he describes it is, like, oh, this girl, she's having a couple friends over, and they show up, and it's, like, a house party. Yeah. Like, and there's, I, like, I, 400 I, extras. And I even introduce, the first time I ever introduce her, I say, this is my, this is yeah. Riley. And, she's, and she slaps me, and it's, like, there's, there's not actually, like, a, a relationship beyond what was happening yeah. with... Mm -hmm. Beyond. 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 Yeah. <laughs> So many puns. Yeah. So many but do you find puns. that it's absolutely irresponsible for him to keep his drugs and condoms in a Ziploc bag? Hey, like, you need to put like, them somewhere. He's not even trying to hide it. Like, get a nice wooden box or a drawer. Ah. Uh, Ziploc bag. Like, this right is like you're ready to go on an airplane and be like, oh, it's just my toilet <laughs> Are those TSA? Yeah. It's just e easily accessible. You uh -huh. can see everything on the outside, so you're not rummaging through. It's just, it it okay. makes sense. Yeah. But it seems like in this episode that we just watched well. that he is taking a step towards being a little bit more um, more invested in his brother's well-being and his family's well-being. Yeah, I think he's realizing the repercussions of his actions. And again, like it, his, his through line is that he just wants to have some normalcy in his life. And I feel like he just wants to have that glue that was there with the family prior to uh, the coma. Right. Um, you know, I, 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 I can definitely, like, I, I just related to that so much. And um, I empathize with, with Luke. Right. And now for that seeking normalcy, he goes and finds this weird mystery girl with one name who has, you know, connected to drawings of another world. This kid is on a great search. I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I just hit gold. He is finding normalcy <laughs> around the corner. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Does this draw you into the conspiracy? Like, do you get to be a part of maybe a rescue or an action stuff? Uh, there's definitely some, some hints that, uh, you know, the, the bonds between him and Luke, uh, Willow are going to be uh, uh, a little more um, engaging over the next few episodes. Engaging? Yeah. Is that like they were blocking? <laughs> <laughs> It's, I think it's in the sense of like, uh, 
I'm trying to say this without giving spoilers. Okay. Um, how are you supposed to tease things when it's all been released? Yeah. Like, no, that's the exactly. Thing. And I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. How many of you have seen every episode? Yeah, who's, who's seen it? Actually who binged it? Okay. Right, most people are weak. So don't spoil it. Okay, that's cool. So, so I'm watching it one week yeah, at a so time. No spoilers. That's good. No spoilers. Okay. Um, no, but you guys definitely. will work together. There's definitely going to be some teaming up right. with certain people. Okay. Now. <laughs> just spoiled it. Teaming <laughs> up. Now, Charlie, and I did not trust this girl as soon as she showed up. Because first of all, anyone who's in Monte Carlo, I'm like, they're trouble. They're trouble and they're counting She's cards. crazy. She's, and I she's feel like she should have a girl. lot more money considering what she can do. Um, we just got hints tonight of that she may be more powerful or more dangerous than we've been led to believe. That she's not just able to see numbers and, and these equations, but there's something that this girl is possibly running from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when when did you find out that this character was was troublesome? Troublesome. <laughs> troublesome, like yeah. running from things. Well, once she has the freak out in the parking lot on the phone, I'm like, okay, this girl is. is there's a couple wires that aren't connecting. Yeah. Yeah. I love that scene. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a great. Yeah. Um, when did I find out that she was troublesome? Mm. Um, you're right from the very start. Okay. She's uh she's. She's a she's a hustler. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's a gam- she's a gambler, mm-hmm. and uh, I I don't think she's afraid to gamble with her life. Okay, all right. We're I'm, I'm assuming we're <laughs> going to find. How cool did that sound? We're, that's cool. We're going right? to gamble yeah, with cool. her uh, life. Beyond. Uh, <laughs> not afraid to gamble with your life. I'm just saying. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, 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 but I, I don't I don't know. She it's been a, I mean it's always exciting to kind of read. Script by script, episode by episode, what, um, how the character is is developing, and um, you know, you definitely get to see a little bit more of a vulnerable side of Charlie. Um, but yeah, God, I, I mean, your guess is as good as mine with what she's running from or running. Okay. I know what she's running toward. Um, yeah, we saw it in this scene. She, yeah, yeah, she's got, she, she's <laughs> got, I, she doesn't. I, Charlie has a lot of money. She doesn't have, I don't think she's got a lot that she holds too close to her, except for Annabelle. Um, And we discover that there's this Annabelle character, sisterly character, um, that uh, Schumacher is sort of threatening over the phone and um, kind of hinting toward that. And um, it, 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 you, you know, it's kind of interesting to discover that there is something that can sort of poke Charlie and, and, push her buttons a little bit and, and it's not much, but that's something. All right. But yeah, she's, she's, she's trouble. I don't yeah. know if I can trust her. Right? Yeah. Cause I was like, I was, I and then I was like, any- I was thinking maybe they wouldn't go all the way because like, you know, maybe she's not good for him. And then clearly she was, <laughs> you know, I keep, you guys are adults. So, um, and I love that Diane, the mom, we talked about this earlier. Like she immediately talked to this girl. Well, she's she hasn't had any friends. He's been in a coma for twelve years. She's good at she's just, she's a little trickster too. She's got she's got some. You know, smart, she's like a charmer. You say you know, you're yeah, a charmer. You, a charmer. She immediately she knows how to goes get into out of yeah. Yeah. weird situation. Mm-hmm. Yep. And to please meeting exactly the Diane. mom. Yeah. Yeah, and the mom is like right on board for this. She's like, especially because like the only other friend he had was killed. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, don't yeah. remind me. That is that was sad. Yeah. Isn't it? I know, did not see that coming. Oh, like, he has Charlie one friend. Out for he comes nice dinner. He comes out <laughs> go on. He's got trucks, one friend man. and you kill him. You go on, take that girl for yeah. a date. <laughs> so now, and Diane is now, didn't see this one coming at all. I thought the domestic drama was going to be a specific story in itself. That we were just like, there was going to be the parents and, and that was going to be separated from the, the, the beyond stuff, the realm stuff. But now we're finding out today in this episode that the creepy preacher. Who? Because I said to them, I'm like, never trust a preacher who wears short sleeves and the collar. I do not trust that man. But let's, I mean, he's got really nice blue eyes. Beautiful so eyes. But, only... but, and Adam pointed out, if some of you may not notice, that they were open when he kissed her, which is gross. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is gross. Which, by the way, is we're the not actor. Judging. I was not aware we're not of judging. that. And I no, hope it's gross. If your I'm eyes saying, are open. Safe space. I hope it was a char- I really do hope it was a character choice. I want to get Chad on the phone, <laughs> right. like, now. <laughs> Like Maybe the insecurities, Chad? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So what can you tell us about 
Diane's because we don't know what transpired between her, her she's gonna conversation sleep with her sleep her way through the town. Is that going to ha- no? Yeah. no? She's going to sleep her way through the town. The next is season not- is the principal. Um, <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. Um, what? Because we don't know what transpired. <laughs> what? What your husband told you, and then well, what separated. Happened. So separated, in, in all yeah. fairness, we so we don't know people. exactly mm-hmm. if his information landed. No, you don't. Well, because he's. Um, Tom's done this before. He went kind of nutty cuckoo mm-hmm. um, when it's a term. I think we can look technical at it. Term. It's technical. Um, it's, it's a clerical, technical yeah. term. It's an acting term. You went nutty cuckoo, um, and uh, so she's used to this kind of oh my. He's on his, another conspiracy thing, but his his the emotion behind it, and it's still the father of her kids. It's still the 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 man she loves, but he's on one of those crazy loops again. But then there's there is that one moment with what he says in regards to Holden and everything that's been going on, that she questions it. And then when Ian, Pastor Ian, shows up at the door, it's like she was attracted to him because he listened to her, because he was sensitive, because he was everything that Tom wasn't. So it's that you know the angel devil where you don't want to believe it. But uh, so she 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 lets him in. So we'll just have to see where that goes. I, know, I got all these questions. Don't break my heart. I don't know. Remember, there's all these other guys in town. Yes, Air there Dayton. is. You know, the driver's ed instructor is still around. Ah, oh, <laughs> we don't know if that guy from the cabin survives. That marriage may not Bill. work. That, yeah, that is true. Nice that, is true. Yeah. that is true. I, saw who I, I just saw him in series of unfortunate events in the first episode, and he was on is the he? trolley. Oh. I was like, oh. Okay, so that's what I wanted to... Look who it is! So, you guys, this show films in Vancouver, and there are, actually, at this point, there were, about a month ago, there were 65 productions in Vancouver going on. Did you guys run into any of the other shows while filming this? Uh, we had neighbors a lot of the we time. Had, yeah. We had neighbors, I mean, and, and our crew kind of jumped you Yeah, know, from between other productions. So, we, we shot in a studio lot, so we had uh, mainly one studio, and then other studios around mm-hmm. us were doing different productions, so you might see, you know, other people that... Right. And Riverview, different. too. Sorry? Riverdale. Oh, Riverdale. Riverdale. Yeah. Yeah. Riverview. Riverview, yeah. yeah. The, is, oh, the uh, insane yeah. asylum. And the yeah. castle. Uh, yes. Yeah, man, like, uh, yeah, and... Uh, Wait, you guys were filming in an insane asylum, and so was Riverdale? No, 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 no. Sorry, this is totally separate from Riverdale. This has nothing to do with Riverdale. The, loca- the insane asylum was called Riverview. Ah, okay. Uh, that's right. Yeah, no, and, you know that. Yep. And there, there were productions filming there simultaneously yeah. all the time. Massive. Multiple. Yeah. It's hu- okay. huge X-Files. property. Because I feel like there should be and like a also Vancouver haunted. softball league, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like where all the all shows play each other. Don't go to the basement. Yeah. Yeah. Play, oh, be, you, there should be a Vancouver okay. softball league for all the TV yeah. shows that film it up there. It would be a massive. Oh, that would be cool. It would be the prettiest softball league ever. As well, <laughs> probably not the most talented at actually. Probably not. Either, no, because they too. all need special effects to do their stunts. <laughs> well, very interesting. Yeah, exactly. You get our stunt doubles out. Like, oh, then, like, then you run. Then you pinch run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would um, be funny right. though. So, Adam, you came from you. We talked about your your pedigree of you know Lost and Once Upon a Time in Wonderland and Tron. Um, was there any? Is there? Is that a? Difficulty for you in creating a new property to not kind of like cannibalize your own ideas from past projects? Well, Tron was easy to not cannibalize because that was in a they computer go into an animated world. Oh, I copied myself. Um, <laughs> oh, no, they go into I a think... computer animated world as well. Yes, the animated <laughs> episode that we'll do in season three. Um, yeah, no, it's um, it's. It was liberating because this one, I, I created this as opposed to coming into a property that someone else created or, you know, the, they, were, they, they were someone else's characters. So this was kind of a, an opportunity to, to look at um, a series and basically, you know, do what I always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So in, in that sense, it was great. So I, we're going to go to some audience questions if you guys have them, but I want to ask for everyone on the panel, and we'll start with Eden. What was the biggest surprise for you personally through season one. Can you want to start somewhere else? <laughs> no. <laughs> the biggest surprise um, in season one, uh, seeing the kind of tease of a possible alliance or something with, oh, I can't say that. It's a spoiler. Okay. It's a spoiler. You just say so, an alliance. An al- uh, a possible big. alliance with a, with a, with a, 
Oh. A person. Okay. <laughs> Another character. <laughs> okay, a character we would not expect Charlie to align herself with? Not necessarily, but yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. All right. I didn't think so. Okay. All right, Romy. Huh? No. <laughs> what? Um, I think the, which was kind of in the middle was, um, and something that I, I loved when I read it was just that um, the good and evil, the fact that Frost was, oh dear. Oh, it's been, it, yeah. sort of, yeah. Frost the thing, you're yeah. good. People know. Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, um, that, that Frost was Willa's father. Mm. Oh, well, that was good. Yeah. That was good, yeah. yeah. I didn't see that one coming at all. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> well done. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. I know, I've been doing this a long time and I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. Uh, Jim, well, that kind of stole mine. Um, get anything to do with like the Hollis guy, honestly. Like, at, at, like reading script to script, it was like anything about the villainous aspect mm -hmm. of the show. Every single episode, I'd be like, oh my God, what's he doing next? What, what's Yellow Jacket doing next? Yeah. He um, is super creepy. I love him. There is this, <laughs> first of all, it, and thank you for building in the, the insult about the jacket. Okay. Because it was like I think episode two, uh -huh. where Erica Alexander oh, like insults his ugly leather jacket. Yeah. Because that is not a color that man should be wearing. His mustard jacket. It did not go to his makeup and hair well, test. No. Yeah. I'm sure he thought that jacket was cool at some Oof, point in his yeah. life. I'm he sure looks like does. an accountant, doesn't he? From right. like the yeah. 1980s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From the He's 70s. Got the 80s class. Yeah. Something you're like, oh. Why? 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 Yeah. Dustin Hoffman really let himself go. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And Berkeley? He's fallen on rough times. I, 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 I'm just saying, I keep getting that comparison of Peter Dustin. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, even uh, stemming from what we were just talking about too, I, I think what really surprised me, which was cool, was how much they dove into Yellow Jacket's character, where you at first are like, wow, this guy's really you know, creepy and kind of, uh, but then you, you see he's a, he's a family man. And it, I, I think w what I liked is that um, both our protagonists and antagonists, um, all of them have stories and everyone has a reason for doing what they're doing rooted in uh, a reality that's explained. Mm -hmm. So you sort of get a well-rounded picture of all of the characters in our show, which I was surprised and, and very, you know, sorry, happy to see. Nice. All right. Uh, I think we've got a hand and then I think somebody's going to run mics. Yeah. Hi, my name's Anthony. I'm an illustration major here at SCAD. What I'm wondering about the show is... In a scene, how many uh, cuts? Am I saying that right? Where, like, you see the takes, like takes, takes, takes. Thank okay. you. How many takes does each scene? A lot of takes. A lot yeah, of, in your sentences. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I'm, I'm sure you guys laughed a lot during that scene. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, we we had a lot of it. It's, I mean, every scene I think is different. Um, for depending on sort of the the direction that the director wants and like how he crafts the scene together, whether it is, you know, relying on, you know, singles or, or two shots, which is like two people or big group shots or sort of different. And this is sort of directorial decisions that um, are, are sort of interesting to sort of dictate a mood of a scene. So it really depends on the performances of whether you want another take, whether the director wants you to do another take, if they want different things. So I think every scene is, is really different when it comes down to how long it takes to actually get. And in television, you don't have the luxury of time. In a, in a big budget film, they can spend, honestly, a week on, on like one scene because it's an action one. But for television, we have eight days to do an entire episode and, you know, and you know, sorry you lose if you don't get that. So a lot of the times, the, the directors, the cast, the producers, the writers, everything, you have to pick and choose what, where you're going to put the importance on. So if it's an emotional scene or an action scene, it really does depend upon, there are so many players to it that um, it, it, it goes from each show, each episode of, of where the importance is going to lie. So how long, the, the sequence at the end of this episode, with the shootout and the guns and the cot, like all that, like... Was the, I could imagine that probably like a half a like three days. Good God, maybe? I think it the was the thing? the whole sequence. Uh, the, like the outside, the exterior, like the action yeah, the, stuff. Yeah, the action. The stuff. action stuff. We yeah, I think it was for sure two. Was it? Did it bleed onto the third? Maybe. I don't remember. I think it was. It was, it was about that. But I mean, it's the thing is, it was there was a lot of there was stunt work. There were like when um, Holden walks out onto the um, the the gravel and it starts vibrating. There was a 
let's say five feet by five feet vibrating sheet that they put under that would like rumble the ground. So there's like literal like you know special effects and stunts and, and rigging, let alone the camera movements and all the stuntmen that had to be prepared and the choreography that had to be done. So there's a lot of stuff even beyond just taking having the actual takes done. <laughs> I can say it was three days to shoot and maybe a month to edit, I think. Yeah, was, that's exactly something that we don't see too. Together. Yeah. Hi, I'm well, Gacy. Hi. I'm a dramatic writer here at SCAD. And um, my question is really for the creator. Like, So you got this like out-of-box story and you finally get it picked up. Like, Once you get it picked up, what was your like thought process on moving forward? Oh my god, I have to what? <laughs> <laughs> I have to write how many? Um, no, it was uh, you, you know to to um, when it when it got picked up, we kind of put together not just first season, but also you know a little bit of second and third, and just you know we, we had an overview of where where the story was going. So um, you know the minute it got picked up, it was kind of like all right, you know let's let's get to work, and you know we had a a, a pretty good idea of of where we were we, where we were heading. Um, so it was um, like a gun went off, just like off to the races. Are you writing season two now? Yes. All right. Yeah. And Adam, thank you guys.